bless your name today. Honor and praise as we lift up our hands to the Lord. Welcome to Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All things are upheld by the words of his power. Get ready to discover the laws that govern the kingdom of God and how those laws can be applied in your life through active faith. That is the picture of what God wants to do for you in your life. And now, Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. All right, well, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Zechariah 9 and 16. Zechariah 9 and 16. Once again, we're talking about symbols of, the ki of kingdom prosperity. God wants to make you a symbol or an example of kingdom prosperity. Once again, that's Zechariah uh, 9 and 16. And just go to Malachi and go to one, one chapter over to the left and you'll find Zechariah. Well, it says, the Lord their God will deliver them that day like the flock of his people. For like jewels embedded in a crown, they will shine in his land like jewels in a crown. They will shine. God wants to make you shine like a jewel in the crown. You all, that is good news. Now, there's a vivid example of this in the word of God. We're looking at Isaac. Let's look at Isaac. Isaac is a great example of this. We understand the story. The word of God says that in Genesis chapter 26, there was a great famine in the land and everyone was moving to Egypt. They were leaving Gerar and going to Egypt. But the word of God says that the Lord appeared unto Isaac and he said, Isaac, don't leave. Go into the land that I will show you. Sojourn in the land. Then I will bless you and I will bless your descendants. I will perform the oath that I gave your father, Abraham. The word of God says that Isaac, he stayed in that land and he sold and he reaped a hundredfold return that year. How many of y'all understand that God bountifully blessed him so much that that place began to look like the Garden of Eden? The word of God says he reaped a hundredfold return. He began to reap so much. The word of God says that he became very rich and very wealthy, not only in, in the land that how it produced the crops, but also in livestock and in servants. I'm sure Isaac was able to hire a lot of people. Now remember, all of the people, they left their land to go to Egypt. Isaac had a lot of land to sow on. And God once again blessed him. Now, the Lord blessed him so much that the people, the government there began to become envious of him. Now, think about it for a moment. Have you ever heard of anyone being so rich that the government is envious of them? That the government is intimidated by them? The government. So the word of God says that Abimelech, they didn't want Isaac in their land anymore because he said look you become too powerful you become too great you got to leave here look here you you outshining me now how many y'all understand the blessing of the lord once again the lord wants to make you a symbol of kingdom prosperity now if we look at this how did isaac prosper well first of all he heard the word and he obeyed the word because he obeyed the word and stayed in that land. Now, this is a message here. Now, listen, when you obey God's word in a midst of a famine, God is obligated to get involved in your, with your situation. What do you mean? God can tell you do a number of things. Now, in the natural, it looked like you should move. You should leave. You should give this away. You should try to get rid of this. But God will tell you oftentimes to stay. Now, when you hear a direct word from the Lord concerning your situation in the natural, it may look negative. But if you hear the word of the Lord tell you instead of leaving and let instead of getting rid of this to stay, keep it, stay where you are, then you are now eligible for 
the, the blessing of the Lord to come on your life. The kingdom of heaven will impact that situation. Why? Because although there's famine around you or this situation may, situation may be of a famine type situation, if you will, circumstance, God is not, God is going to bless that thing. You'll have the windows of heaven poured out on you. Why? Because you decided to obey God instead of moving to Egypt or moving away or getting rid of that. God told you to stick with it. Anytime you obey God, you employ the kingdom to bless your life. And that's exactly what we see here with Isaac. The word of God says he reaped a hundredfold return. Not only a hundredfold return again, his livestock increased as well as his servants. Once again, the Lord wants to make you a symbol of kingdom prosperity. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Psalm 67. Psalm 67. Psalm 67, we'll begin reading at verse 5. It says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then will the earth yield its produce, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let's look at this. It says, let all the people praise him. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. So that tells me something. Praise is a major factor in becoming a symbol of kingdom prosperity. He wants us to praise him. Now let's look at it. We can praise God different ways. Yes, we can throw our hands and praise God. We can pray. Listen, oftentimes this is what I believe. You praise and you worship God when you do what God calls you to do. When you can do what he's called you to do or what he's telling you to do with a good attitude, when you are in the midst of doing that, listen, you can't help but say, God, you know what? I thank you, Lord God, for putting me on this assignment. I believe your word. I believe you're going to do exactly what you told me you're going to do. You begin to praise God. And if you notice when you begin to work, listen, it becomes therapeutic. What do you mean? It's something about when you're doing God's work, it's an easiness that's about it. Now, it may not always be easy, but there is a blessing. There is something about it that you enjoy. Because when you're doing that, guess what? You're enjoying the presence of God. Now, what do you mean the presence of God? When you are doing what God has called you to do, when you're walking, coupled with walking in love, let me tell you something, your, the grace to do that will come upon you. So your grace to do it, and that means there's a power, there's an anointing to get it done. And also coupled with you praising God, God, I thank you for giving me this assignment. You continue to do that, something will break out on the inside, and you can't help but express it on the outside. Now, when you begin to express it on the outside, the Word of God says he inhabits the praise of his people. He will come down and listen, you begin to bless God and, and, and you'll feel the presence of God. And let me tell you something, oftentimes when you do that, the Holy Spirit, he'll begin to tell you things. He'll begin to share some more things to you. He'll tell you, hey, I want to bless you this way. I'm going to do this thing for you. I'm going to do that. You begin to commune with each other. You're praising, you're blessing him, and he'll begin to tell you secrets of the future, things he wants to do for you in the immediate, in other words, quickly, soon to come. He will do those things. You're praising, he inhabits the praise of his people. Well, I said a lot. But let's look at some examples here. Do you remember Zechariah? The word of God says, talking about John the Baptist's parents. Now, the word of God says that they were, him and his and his wife, Elizabeth, they were righteous people. They obeyed the commands of the Lord. The word of God says one day when Zechariah was worshiping, what do you mean worshiping? He was lighting incense in the temple. He was doing his duties. The word of God says an angel came and appeared before him while he was doing the work, what he was called to do. The angel appeared before him and gave him some good news. The word of God says his wife was barren, but he got some news that God was about to bless him. It's something about it when you're doing what God has called you to do with a good attitude, walking in the law of love. Let me give you another example. Do you remember Cornelius? The word of God talks about Cornelius in Acts. It says that now he did this 
Customarily, he prayed and gave alms to God. Well, one day he was praying, and you know what? The angel appeared and gave him an instead of his, an, a set of instructions. The angels told him, said, look here, your prayers and your alms has come up before God as a memorial. And the angel told him, hey, go send men to Joppa. And the bottom line, at the end of the day, what happened was he received salvation. Something happens when you're doing what you're called to do, when you're worshiping God, when you're communing with God. Once again, the word of God says he inhabits the praise of his people. Now, let me give you another example. This is in the natural. But, uh, you know, back in the day, there was two powerhouses in the NBA. It was the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics. Now, I'll be honest with you, I didn't too much care for the Boston Celtics. I was a true Lakers fan. However, uh, one day I was watching a documentary, and they was talking about Larry Bird. And they said Larry Bird would... would, would be dribbling the ball during the game, talking to the opponent. He said that, 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 according to the documentary, he said that Larry Bird would say, tell the opponent, look, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to score. And the person, of course, his opponent said, okay, yeah, come on. They said in the documentary that Larry Bird would do exactly what he told the opponent and would score whether he was through to shoot a three-pointer or lay it up. And they will be left with their jaws open like this man told me what he's about to do. He did it. And I can't believe I still couldn't defend him. That's exactly the picture what God wants to do for you in your life. He's going to tell you, look, here, I'm going to bless you with this, 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 this and that. And he will do it so fast, so quickly that you'll be left with your jaw just dropped open because you kind of you're looking at man. God did exactly what he said he was going to do. God knows how to bless you bountifully. Well, praise God. I hope that you're enjoying today's Bible lesson. Well, I have some exciting news. Our ministry is expanding. We now can be seen in most states here in the U.S. and also in some foreign countries. We're also expanding our local radio ministry. We can be heard on KJBN 1050 AM now six days a week. Now, if this ministry has been a blessing to you or if it's touched your heart, please consider partnering with us as we proclaim and teach God's word. Now, for a monthly partnership of $20 or more, we will send you via email the sermon, I can't afford it. In this sermon, we look at how God views that mentality. We'll go through scriptural references and we'll also give practical and personal examples that will help you as you endeavor to live the abundant life. Now, we have several ways of giving. You can download the Givelify app and look for our church name, Living the Abundant Life Christian Center, Little Rock, Arkansas, or text to give to 501-270-8699 or look for our website, www.livingtheabundantlifechristiancenter.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the prompts. And also by phone. Call our church number at 501-554-3234. Leave your name and number and someone will get back with you. Now, thank you for your consideration as it relates to partnering with this ministry. May God bless you. Now, let's get back to today's Bible lesson. Bountifully. Thank you. He inhabits the praise of his, of his people. When you do what God has called you to do, when you praise and worship him, he will tell you how he wants to bless you. And the only thing you're going to do, you're going to be left standing there saying, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in my eyes. <laughs> praise God. Well, let's get on to the next scripture. If you have your Bibles, turns to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 10. It reads, all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you overflow in prosperity in the offspring of your body and the offspring of your livestock and in the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Once again, it says, all the people on the earth will see that the Lord is with you. 
We can find this in our case study. We're talking about Isaac. And uh, in fact, let's go to Isaac chapter 26, verse 26, because it talks about this very thing. Once again, it says all the people, they're going to notice, they're going to see the Lord on you. Genesis chapter 26, verse 26, it reads, Then Abimelech went to him, talking about uh, Isaac, from Gerar, along with Ahuzah, one of his friends, and Phicol, the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? And they said, we saw plainly that the Lord was with you. They saw plainly that the Lord was with him. So we said, let there now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you so that you will do us no harm, just as we have not touched you and have done you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. Then he made them a feast, and they ate and drank. They rose up early in the morning and swore an oath with one another. Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. Once again, the Lord would cause people to take notice of you. They said, listen, if you notice Abimelech, who represents the king, a good friend of his and the captain or the general of his army came to seek out to find Isaac. When they found him, they said, look here. Well, let me say it this way. Isaac looked at them and said, OK, what do you want? You already sent me away. And they said, hey, man, look here. We want to make good. Look, we see that the Lord is with you. Now, let me stop right here. Let's look at this for a moment. Isaac is extremely blessed so much that Abimelech asked him to leave because he was outshining him. And later on, all of a sudden, now they're coming back to make sure everything is good with them because where God says that they saw that the Lord was with them. Now, what happened here? Now, this is not in the word, but this is what I believe. I believe when Isaac left, the blessing left. See, it's one thing for you to sow and we see all the benefits. But there's another thing when it's look like when you leave, then all of the blessings follow you. Now, let's notice something. He didn't leave on his own. They asked him to leave. They envied him. And it's something about it. When they asked him to leave, the blessing left with them. You know, the word of God talks about, Jesus talks about uh, he, to the disciples when he sent them out. He said, look here, basically he said, when you go to a house, you know, you check everything with peace. And if they accept you, everything's good. But if they, if you, if they don't accept you, listen, take the peace with you. Let the peace follow you. Listen, there's something about when God sends you to a place, the blessing is there. But when they get rid of you or they ask you to leave or whatever, it's something how it looked like things change. I believe that everything changed. And when things change back to famine status, I believe with all my heart, they know then that the Lord's with, with Isaac because they said that we see that the Lord was with you. And they came there. Listen, now he's already gone, but they went out to seek him, to find him, to make sure there's peace. Now, wait a minute now. You're talking about the, the, the king, his good friend, and the general of the army is going to seek you out to make sure there's no bad blood between you after they ask you to leave. They had the fear of God on them. But you know what Isaac did? He handled it all in, in good taste. He said, OK, cool. Listen, the word of God says that, look, they had a feast with them. They had a feast about and they got up and left. In other words, he made it good with them. You all, something once again about the blessing. When the blessing is on you, people will see it. They will recognize and they realize, no, it's the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. It is God's anointing that's on you. Amen. Well, let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 33 and 9. Jeremiah 33 and 9. And it says, it will be to me a name of joy, praise and honor 
but for all the nations of the earth which shall hear of all the good that I do to them. And they will fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure for it, or I bless them or give it to them or gather for them. So let's look at this. God wants to send you to a place where you can turn it back to the Garden of Eden. He wants to bless you, whatever he assigned you to do. He wants you to fulfill that Eden mandate. What do you mean? The word of God says, when Isaac sold in that land, he reaped a hundredfold return. Now, wait a minute, you can't get any better than that. In other words, that place that was a famine, it now looks like the Garden of Eden. It was perfect from the perspective of it reaped a hundredfold return. That's the Garden of Eden. He fulfilled the Garden of Eden mandate. What is that? To replenish the earth. God wants to send you somewhere where his light is dim. He wants to send you somewhere where you can replenish that place. It could be on a particular job or, or a particular place. Whatever it is, he's going to send you to a place where, once again, his light is dim. Why? So he can shine his glory on you so people will see, though, yes, this is of God. This is the Lord's doing. The word of God says, listen, it will be to me a name of joy, praise, honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all the good that I do to them. He's going to do some good things to you and that they will fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure, procure for it. In other words, listen, the place where God sent you, the anointing is going to fall on you so heavily. God wants to do this. Once again, he wants to send you to a place where his light is dim. Now, let me give you an example of this and I'll give a personal example. Uh, my last, uh, the last part of my, my uh, graduate school, uh, when I was working on my master's, I received a call from the principal of this particular local high school wanted me to teach there. And, uh, but then I had a, a, a previous band director who told me about two other jobs because they needed woodwind specialists and, and, and I know both those places and they were really nice big colleges. And he said that, listen, man, you get in. I had his backing and his support and uh, he said, he, he told me, he said, look here, when you get in, you're going to be the third man on the totem pole. And he said, listen, oftentimes the second in command, oftentimes we'll get frustrated with the, with the head band director. And listen, he'll leave soon, so you'll be number two, and soon you'll be the head band director at some college. That was a good plan in the natural. It sounded good for me. Remember, it was my desire to become a college band director. But I knew in my, my spirit, I knew that God was wanting me to go teach at the local high school. Well, I, I went and moved to Little Rock, and, and, uh, and I remember looking at the high school, and later on, of course, after you're hired, that's when you find out everything. And, of course, I found out, you know, they didn't hardly have any instruments, and, and the uniforms was old, and, you know, but, you know, none of that mattered. You know why? Because the blessing of God was on me. The blessing of God was on me. Now, let me say this. At one time, this particular local high school was the Garden of Eden. What do you mean? They won national band competitions. I'm talking about number one in the nations. They had such a spirit of excellence on them. They are known, they were known in the nation as being a superior band. In fact, I remember going to some music conventions where they talked about this very same thing. This actually it was a music, uh, a uh, composer talked about the excellence that high school once had. Now, let me tell you, now that's what I heard, but let me tell you proof of that. About 20 years ago, I was asked, they had a special program at this local high school where they had a band reunion. Now, these guys were 60s, 70s, 80s, and let me tell you something, the only thing you do was drop a time, the band, the band director stick, they took off. I was floored. Those old men, when I say they can play, 
I mean, they had the tone, they had the sound, and they were awesome. Now, once again, we're talking about these men are 60, 70, 80 years old. And so they were awesome. They were fruit of the excellence that was once at that local high school. Now, but God sent me there to restore it. And I never get uh, a few years later after I remember taking the, to the band to the concert contest, as it was called then. And one judge told me, she said, you are turning this program around. She said, at one time, this program was the laughing stock of the state of Arkansas. Once again, God will send you to a place where the, his light is dim. God wanted to use me to rebuild that band program. I think it was quite interesting. A, a few years, maybe about two or three years ago, the uh, current band director there asked me to come back and uh, just uh, take some notes on the uh, band, you know, uh, with things they need to improve upon. And, um, and I said I would. Well, it was actually a concert for, for the community and for the parents. They were preparing for concert contests. And so, but I never forget, he opened it up. He said, look, this is Dr. Meredith. And he said, listen, he said, it's because of him that I'm here. He said, because he built this band program. Now, if you notice, I'm talking about things that people have said about the program, not myself. Because he built the program, he made it attractive. And because he built that program, I am here today. And so the point is this. God wants to use you to replenish the earth. We're talking about symbols of kingdom prosperity. He wants to send you to a place where his light, where the light, his light is dim and where you can restore or make that place the Garden of Eden, Well, people will see, people will say that, man, this is God's doing. They will recognize the work of God, using, him using you. Now, let's go to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 13. We bless your name today, honor and praise, as we lift up our hands to the Lord. This has been Living the Abundant Life with Dr. Samuel Meredith. We pray that you continue to gain more insight into God's Word as Dr. Meredith shares the good news of the laws that govern the kingdom and how those laws can be applied through the active faith in your life. The Living the Abundant Life Christian Center is located in Little Rock, Arkansas at 8923 Sunset Lane, directly behind the Dollar General. You are invited to join us each Sunday at 11 a.m. for Sunday School and again at 1145 where you will enjoy a powerful worship service. Remember to tune in to KJBN 1050 a.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. as Dr. Meredith encourages us with Bible-based laws that will help us to prosper in every aspect of our lives. Please send all correspondence to the address on the screen and we thank you for watching Living the Abundant Life with Pastor Samuel Meredith. We magnify your name, we glorify, and we lift up our hands to the Lord.